How's it going? Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're looking at the RV fridge. You just want your food to be cold, your freezer to be frozen, and how do we help that process out? Now, the RV fridge is one of those things that it's fantastic when it's working well, and it's extremely frustrating when it's not working well and your food's getting spoiled. So uh, let's start with some general things that you should know about the RV fridge, and then we'll talk about some ways that you can really boost the performance of your RV fridge to, to get your food at the proper temperature. Really, that's the goal of the RV fridge. The general rule of thumb for temperature is 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like, like 1.5 Celsius. But these things really aren't that efficient. So there's a lot of things that we can do to help them out. Number one is we can check the seals. If your seals need to be replaced and you're just losing tons of cold coming out of it because your seals don't seal against the edge, then you're just fighting an uphill battle. So the way that you test your seals is you can grab like a a dollar bill, just close it right on in there. And you can test it on all the way around, uh, but this will check our seal. So if we can kind of tug on it and it has some resistance, we know that that seal is resting and, and keeping that cold in there. So uh, if you can just kind of push that dollar bill in and out, it will, that's bad. Uh, we can pull it out, but you want some resistance when you're checking the seal around it with the dollar bill. So if your seals are good, you wanna set the proper temperature. A lot of the newer ones, they'll have a display up here where you can actually set uh, digitally the temperature you want. Some of the older ones, they have the thermistor that's on the, the fins inside there. I think it's if you raise it up, it makes it cooler inside the fridge, and if you lower it, it'll make it warmer. So you wanna mess with the settings to get the proper temperature in there. Now we use a uh, digital thermometer because ours doesn't have anything like that. and. Uh, this is the one that we have. I'll put a link in the description to this, um, but it's just a digital thermometer so that we can know what the temperature inside the fridge is and we can make our adjustments from there with the knowledge that this gives us. It's pretty obvious to see that this is way different than a residential refrigerator. Uh, your RV refrigerators, typically you're going to see a, a two-way refrigerator uh, that can run primarily off of electric, propane when you need it, and then if you have a three-way, it can also run off of the batteries. Now, this is an absorption refrigerator, so the way that that works is that it actually absorbs the heat out of the refrigerator space and the freezer space. When you have the absence of heat in here, it's obviously going to be cold. You'll see some differences in how they operate too. A residential refrigerator, you can get that thing down in temperature pretty quick. An absorption refrigerator, you wanna turn on the night before if you're getting ready to go on a trip. They take a considerable amount of time to get down to temperature. So since they're not that efficient, you also don't wanna put in warm food because then it's gonna to have to absorb the warmth from that food out to keep the temperature in your fridge where it needs to be. Okay, let's look inside the fridge. So even the way that you have the food in here can affect the efficiency of it. You can see that the way that we tried to load the fridge is to be able to have space so the air can be able to get from the top and be able to get down to the bottom uh, because the, the main part of the cooling is going to come from the fins up here. And if you just jam pack these shelves to where uh, some of that cold is being blocked from being able to drop down, it won't be efficient all the way through. So there's a few things you can do to help that. A lot of times you can leave place for the, places for the air to be able to drop down because that cold air wants to sink down. Um, leave some space, don't jam pack your fridge too much beyond capacity. And then you also can put in a fan. Some people will put in a fan in here so that you can help that air circulate. We don't do that, ours has been efficient enough. Uh, but some people like the fan. It helps, it's supposed to help evenly distribute that cold air in here. That's the other thing. You don't wanna leave the fridge door open too long. Uh, you don't wanna be crazy about it. People that uh, gave us some advice the first time we got the RVs, they said don't open the fridge any more than two times a day and know what you're getting. It was stressful, that was completely ridiculous. Uh, you don't need to be that extreme. Just be mindful. The more that fridge door opens, the harder it's gonna to have to try and work to get that heat out of there. Also, if you use your fridge for an extended period of time, uh, you will start to see frost build up in the freezer. You can see that it's about time to defrost ours. We have some ice forming on the back. Uh, usually we just pull everything out, put it in an ice chest for a short amount of time, and uh, we'll get a hair dryer. If you do the hair dryer, uh, a lot of people will recommend not doing it. 
we use the hairdryer. It's much quicker. We don't put it on the high setting and we don't try and blast heat like it's a flamethrower in there. You don't want to damage anything or melt any plastic or have it too extreme of a temperature change. You don't want anything cracking or breaking or anything like that. So just a little bit of heat to help pull that ice off the wall and uh, be able to get that space back in uh, to your freezer by getting rid of all that ice. So let's head outside to look at how we can make this thing more efficient for how it operates. So here's the back side of the fridge where all the components are to make the fridge work the way that it needs to. And uh, there's just a few key components and things that we can do to help it out to operate the best that it possibly can. So the way an absorption refrigerator works is it uses a chemical reaction with a ammonia and hydrogen uh, induced with heat and with evaporation and condensation. It comes down through these tubes and it creates the, the cool inside the fridge or rather absorbs the heat out of the fridge creating that cool space in there. So the key is having isolated heat where you need it and have the other components be able to cool down properly so that it can be efficient as possible. One of the easiest things we can do to keep it functioning well is if we set our RV up where it's level. And if your fridge is level to your RV, things are going to be operating properly because on this side of the, the fridge, where we have those lines, you, you'll see like a zigzag pattern coming down. It needs gravity for that side of the fridge to work. Those chemicals need to be able to come down and they're gravity driven. There's no moving parts in there, no mechanics, but we do need gravity to pull those chemicals down into here so that it can reheat them up so that it can go through the process again. So if you're not level, your fridge isn't going to work efficiently or possibly even at all, depending on how out of level you are. The other thing we wanna do back here is keep this area clean. We wanna keep these, these tubes cleaned off so that they can, these actually need to cool on this side. Uh, we want to make sure no nests or wasps, as a wasp flies by right now, are building a nest in here. There's also a spider that likes to build a web inside of the burner tube. So if you try and turn on LP uh, on the propane, it may not fire because that's blocked. So if we wanted to pull this cover off on this fridge, there's another little door behind there and we can uh, clean that, that burner tube assembly in there. You can try and clean it out just as it is and either blow it out with an air compressor or if you wanted to take the whole assembly apart, you could do that, wire brush it, clean it up the best that you can. So when you wanna look at that flame back in there to see if it's functioning properly, you wanna see a nice, even blue flame that's able to create that heat to make the fridge work. You can also make sure that vent tube is cleaned out. You can blow it out with air again, or if you think there's something jammed inside there, you can take like a pry bar and gently tap on the end to see if anything falls out through the bottom because you want that to be able to exhaust properly for the fridge. This is where we want the heat to be isolated to, uh, whether it's using electricity to generate that heat or the LP, this is where that is going to begin that chemical reaction to have the whole process work properly. So in the list of things to help keep that heat isolated and the cooling happening where it needs to, is we can look at how we park our RV. Are we pointing this side of the RV towards the south where it's gonna get a lot of sun and just have a lot of general heat in this area? That will make the fridge not work near as efficiently. Uh, do we have afternoon sun where we need to put out the awning and we can shade this area so that it's not just a generalized heat? Those are things we can do to help the fridge be a lot more efficient. Now, if you need to take it a step beyond that and you need to add more efficiency to your fridge, we can begin to add fans for this back area so that we can have that heat be able to exhaust out the top. Let me grab a fan real quick. So this fan here is something that can mount to the back side of your grate and it's it's going to do a couple of things if some people put them down here i'm not a huge fan of putting them down here and just blowing air into this uh, because remember we want heat here we want it to cool over here and just creating turbulence isn't really our goal we want to be able to have that air enter in through the bottom and come out the top so if you have your fridge on a slide and you have one of these vents that's up near the top to have that heat come out this is where you could put a fan like this. This one's actually as uh, by Titan. Um, it's meant to push the air out. So if I had a slide, I would use a fan like this if I'm trying to boost performance in my fridge. And uh, when you put that in there and turn it on, uh, it's going to pull the air out that way on that upper vent. You wouldn't want to do this on the lower vent because you don't want to pull air out here. You want to help that air do what it naturally wants to do. And it want, that heat wants to rise and go out the top vent. 
This one came with controls. You could set it up, uh, turn it on manually if you wanted to. You also have auto settings on here so that if you were to have this, uh, which is going to check the temperature in there, once it gets to a certain temperature, it's going to kick on and throttle up that fan. So if you had this on that upper vent in the fridge, it's going to pull the air out of there. The hotter it gets in there, the more active this is going to be. I think this thing uh, pulls about like a quarter of an amp when it's on. It comes pretty simple to set up. It gives you uh, the power cable, which you can pull power from right here. There's constant power, uh, so you're able to just plug that right in. And then you connect your fan to the controller. The hardest part is probably just getting the wires from this area up to that upper vent where the fan, fan would be mounted. So here's what it would look like. We'll just turn it on manually, and we can turn that fan speed up. And it blows actually a, a decent amount of air out of these vents here. I have one more fan to show you, but before we dive into that, uh, there are other options if you need even more cooling out of your RV fridge. Uh, JC Refrigeration, they have all kinds of different things where you can, you basically build a new fridge around your old refrigerator housing. Uh, so you can do like a double cooling unit, you can do like a compressor unit built into your RV fridge. There's other options out there, but like I said, you're basically building a new fridge. So uh, let's look at that last fan uh, to help your current RV fridge work. So this is the same idea, just with a bigger fan. This one would work well if your RV fridge is not on the slide and you needed to vent it out the roof, or it was venting out the roof. This one usually fits well in that kind of a situation. Let's jump up there and take a look at that. You can see the fan fits in here really well. So you could cut that screen, put it just below it. The biggest trick to installing the fan up here is getting those wires run all the way down to have the control and the temperature sensor where you want it without it touching anything that you don't want it to touch. So running those wires down in through there. But a good option for being able to pull that air out um, and make the fridge just more efficient. It's actually quite hot and humid today. Let's hop down and wrap this thing up. So sometimes it could be as simple as just having a little bit of knowledge behind how an RV fridge works or being able to add a fan uh, to help it work efficiently is all you need to be able to keep your food cold and working and functioning the best it possibly can so you can enjoy it. And that's really my goals. I, I hope this helps you enjoy the RVing experience and enjoy getting out there and using your RV even more if you don't have to hassle with your fridge. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already for more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video.